Every day, I see people criticizing postmodernism for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's legitimate, sometimes not so much. Most of the time, it's someone criticizing some aspect of something that is vaguely related to postmodernism, and then people point out to them in the comments that actually that is just one of the things that does fall under the postmodern umbrella, which is a very broad umbrella that comprises many things, but at the same time also failing to address the certain point, which doesn't really get addressed in the addressal of the addressal, uh, because frankly, the people who were criticizing postmodernism in the first place were not aware that it is such a broad umbrella of various different things. But I have yet to see someone bring postmodernism to justice for its greatest crime. Irony. We all know irony. We all understand it. Even autistic people, by the way, that's a common misconception. They fully understand irony. They're just not very good at detecting it. It's incredibly funny. Definitely my favorite mode of comedy. It's also not really the irony I'm talking about. I'm talking about the way that irony as a concept has seeped into every single aspect of how we as a society relate to and consume culture, to the extent that I am so utterly poisoned by it that I am completely incapable of being genuine at any point in time. Nobody really likes things anymore, and anyone who does like something, we do it for very short periods of time, never actually getting fully invested in the thing, because we understand that the thing we liked in two weeks time, culture will have completely reinvented itself and it will be considered quaint, antiquated, in a, not in the good way that some things are quaint and antiquated, and there will be a period of time where we vehemently distance ourselves from that particular thing faster and harder than Hollywood distanced itself from Brendan Fraser when he came forward about having been sexually harassed in the early 2000s. We will, as individuals, either never talk about it again or mock the sheer idea that anyone could have at any point liked this in any way, including ourselves. We are stuck in this endless, hellish cycle where everything from a month ago is cringe and everything a month from now we know on some level will be cringe, but we try not to think about it, much like we try not to contemplate the fact that our entire existence is utterly meaningless in the face of a cold and uncaring universe. And these cringe things can be things that are very popular, they're just not on vogue. It's the eternal hipster. Just everything that people like must by default be bad. And the worst thing about this is that, like, the quality of the thing itself is never the determining factor as to whether or not all the fucking irony-poisoned mega-hipsters, into which I am absolutely including myself, will give it the irony treatment. Worse than that, whether or not we like the thing doesn't matter either. And don't even consider liking things over an extended period of time. That shit is gay and cringe. The problem is, those people who are gay and cringe, they're actually happy. Which the most frustrating aspect of that is that they have figured out that people will relentlessly attack them out of irony for pretty much literally anything they ever say. So many of them have just stopped giving a shit and just openly enjoy the cringe things now. How am I supposed to derive any form of cope out of not enjoying literally any aspect of my life at any point in time if I can't rile someone up on Twitter about it who feels very passionately about the things they do like? Do you know how selfish it is that you don't let me ruin your day so I can feel better about myself? I'm so deep in the hellish abyss limbo pit river sticks of irony that my brain rips itself apart trying to figure out what I actually like and want, what I like and want ironically, what I dislike and diswant, and what I dislike and diswant ironically. The human mind is not made to decide these things in so many dimensions. But wait, 
There's more! Another aspect of irony that I just fucking despise is that it has created a, an obsession with authenticity and originality that at the same time is so utterly self-referential that it might as well be just a closed loop. Because references are the only way we can still ironically enjoy things that are no longer on vogue and therefore cringe. Look, I'm a big fan of exploring new ideas, I think that's why one of the things that art is supposed to do in the greater social context. And just to be clear, I don't think all art needs to do this. It's fine if a lot of art doesn't do this. I'm just saying it's one of the things that art is very good at. But does it really have to be all original? all of the time. I'm a speculative fiction author, you might know this, I have a whole second YouTube channel that I, I technically I still write short stories for it, I just haven't uploaded one in a very long time, and I'm also like an active GM, a lot of people are exposed to my fiction. I have a short story collection that you can purchase on Amazon.com. And if you work in any creative profession though, you will know this, just the, the, oh look, this bears some superficial similarity to another thing wh whose existence I am aware of. Therefore, it is the same thing. No fam, it doesn't have flying cars because it's a Blade Runner reference. It has flying cars because flying cars are fucking cool. Gone are the days where people will just read the same story over and over and over and over and over again be just because they like the genre of the story or they like the main guy or they like the way the writer writes. In our world of postmodern irony, everything you do must be completely original in every conceivable aspect, which let me tell you is impossible because every fucking thing has been fucking done before, or it has to be a reference, in which case it has to be done in a very particular way, and preferably it's a pop culture reference. So eventually what happens is that all of culture becomes completely self-referential, all of the cultural items that have been produced in these few decades, just a closed loop of references, and no one a hundred years from now is going to understand it, except for some like academic pseudo hipsters who made up their own sciences where they pretend to know what the fuck is going on, but they never actually do, which no one can disprove, because nobody knows what the fuck is actually going on, because they didn't grow up with the cultural context of growing up in the times that we live. No! I refuse! CEASE! It has robots in it because I like robots and it, the, it is similar in some respects. There are similar elements to this anime I've never heard of because it turns out that in the reality that we exist in, sometimes Similar things happen. What do you make your coffee every morning expecting that it will taste differently to how it did yesterday? Are you disappointed when it does not? No! Because you like coffee, and you like coffee unironically. Every once in a while, you will try some new stuff. If you're like me and are very into novelty, you will try some new stuff more than just every once in a while. Except, of course, not in my case. I don't actually like coffee, but that's neither here nor there. Point is, you don't drink coffee to be original. You don't drink coffee as a reference to drinking coffee. Except of course, actually, you fucking do. Because we all fucking do. Because our ironic rejection of any sort of group identity has become so absurd that it's just become an inverted version of the thing that we are trying to ironically parody. There's so many people out there who drink coffee solely as a reference to other coffee drinks is even though they do not enjoy it. And if they ever do enjoy it, they're cringe. They, they are now cringe. So stay sharp, never enjoy anything, and 
please, for the love of God, never actually mean anything that you say. I didn't actually mean most of this video. It was completely ironic. Or was it post-ironic as an ironic commentary of the postmodern irony? Am I saying things ironically that I actually mean unironically? Am I adopting ironic takes to a degree where I actually live my entire life in the exact same way uh, that someone who would believe those takes would live his life unironically, ironically. Fuck! Thank you very much. No, I will not tell you what I actually mean by any of this. You can uh, theorize about this forever for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon or subscribe to so I can be more ironic even. I can make more irony. Or will I? Was my last video ironic? Didn't seem so. Maybe I hate role-playing games. Have you considered that? Consider buying some of my merchandise down below or also I uh, hear the, these cups right here or the short story collection I advertised earlier or do it ironically. And in that spirit, can I please go back to being a child and actually enjoy things ever? And see you around, cunts.